trade alert. Trade alert. A big trade. Kluber comes off the board. The Klubot been rumored to be traded for a while. Big time rumors last year before the injury with crazy packages. He gets dealt to the Indian to the Rangers from the Indians to yep. the Rangers in exchange for outfielder Lino De Shields and right hander Emmanuel Clace, who's you know a, a closer uh, who throws a hundred and one mile per hour cutter supposedly, and uh, Kluber had a one million dollar bonus in his contract if he gets traded and he the Indians are sending 500 of that to the Rangers so the Rangers actually got some money they got five hundred thousand dollars and Kluber for Delano de Shields and Emmanuel Clace there's a couple talking points about this trade one Jake I saw a lot of people on Twitter and Reddit and baseball forums say like whoa the Rangers they're competing and anyone that listens to talking baseball and you and I have been talking about all they see, we've been telling you the Rangers are going to make a splash for a while now. So I wasn't surprised at all when I saw this, but a lot of people still didn't realize the Rangers are trying to go all in. They got the new stadium. They got some players they like, and they want people to come to the new stadium and get excited about the team. And this is what that does. So that's uh, the Rangers aren't done, by the way. Right? Ra- Rangers are not done. I mean, they were in on Rendon. Um, I, I mean, there's a chance they go for Josh Donaldson or hell. I would kind of love it if they finished they said off the rotation, man. Um, I you be- know, hey, go make a splash and sign Ryu and make it five deep with a lot of quality guys. I mean, that would be badass. Um, I, I, I think they've still got one, uh, another move up their sleeve. Um, but with, with the Kluber trade, I'm, I'm interested to get your thoughts, Jammer, cause I know, um, from all the reports we heard middle of this season, um, things were down on Kluber. Do I, I mean, it, is it kind of Texas taking a chance because everyone was giving the Indian shit, um, because it on paper, the return for Kluber doesn't look great. Um, but there's a chance Kluber is not anything close to Kluber anymore. Yeah. I think there's a good chance. I mean, I had heard reports when Kluber was trying to make his comeback towards the end of last season that like he did one bullpen session and they were like, they just shut it down. They're like, no yeah. chance. We roll you on the mound throwing this. Um, so the, I think the miles per hour are severely dropped. And I think, you know, outside baseball doesn't know that yet. And maybe he does make a full recovery. If he is like, you know, if he returns to 100% healthy Kluber and is like, you know, a fucking dominant ace, right. then this is a bad trade by the Indians. They get guys... This is my problem with the Indians. They want to tank. We've been saying this for years. They would love to tank. They'd love to trade Lindor and dump salary and all that stuff. But they have too good of players. So now they're making these trades where they trade Bauer, but they bring back Puig. And they're like, no, guys, fans, we're still trying to compete right now. And then they can can use that same excuse with Delano de Shields and Emmanuel Clace and just tell their fan base, well, we had better packages, but we want to compete right now. And these two guys come over and they go on our team right away. And there might be a lot of truth to that, but I still just think it's dumb. This is a salary dump. I mean, yeah, it's a salary well, dump. There's not really any ways around it. Yeah, I think the other thing, I mean, with the Bauer trade, I think the Puig, I, I think that's almost a good comparison to the the Todd Frazier trade a few years back. Like Puig was the name you know, but Fran Mil Reyes was was the piece they wanted in that trade. Um so yeah, I mean it it's how much do they do they love this this thrower they got, the Chase kid. Um but yeah, no, I Angel fans were pissed off cuz like we've been talking about they need they need more throwers and uh and they the reported package that was being asked for from Angels land and again, who who knows the truth to this, but it was big prospects. Um so the Angels are looking at the return that Cleveland got her saying like what the hell um we we heard you were looking for two top 10 prospects and now you do it for a utility guy and a, a top 30 prospect um so it, it it'll be interesting to see um what Kluber still got and I mean yeah even if he's 85 percent of himself um it seems like a good deal for the Rangers but there's also like a chance and I'm surprised more people aren't talking about it that like Kluber ain't Kluber anymore 
They took the chance. Like it, it, reportedly, the the Indians had better offers, but this is what they wanted. And I think what the the best thing is, they did not want to roll the dice and have him pitch in 2020, and then you know move him at the deadline because I think they are scared his value might plummet. Right. Once he gets on the mound a handful of times. So the Rangers are taking the chance there. But, hey, they have a little nice rotation now. They got, they picked up Kluber. They have Miner. They have Lance Lynn. They picked up Gibson. And they picked up Lyles, which, you know, isn't really going to, like, make you say, oh, shit, wow. But not a lot of teams have five solid, five solid guys with experience and can go out there and do a pitch for a whole season. Yeah, how about how about Jordan Lyles with his Milwaukee numbers earning earning himself some money? Good for him. Um, yeah, Rangers are Rangers are my number one like flip or flop team. Like either those those old birds put it together. Like Mike Miner's a stud. Lance Lynn has figured it out. Kluber's healthy, um, and like it it all comes together. Or like I think it could be a train wreck. <laughs> like it could be it could be like you know Lance Lynn was a little smoke and mirrors. Kluber's dead. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 excited for it though. I mean, this is this is what we talked about all last year is that we wish teams tried this um and baseball had gotten away from it. It's been a great off season for baseball. I mean, yeah. we are still not at Christmas. I mean, by Christmas last year, Jake, was there anything that happened? I think I was looking at it. I, I think like Corbin had happened and I think one other thing. But um, everything's happened. Almost everything. Yeah. 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 Like now if if you're one of the free agents left, like we talked about, there's definitely still a sweet spot. Like you might get a bidding war for Ryu or Keichel or, or someone like that. But if you're a free agent, you're also a little like it, are, if you're Marcelo Zuna or Nick Castellanos, are you starting to get nervous? Like are our teams starting to check off their list already and, and kind of be done? Um uh, I don't know. That's kind of that weird, weird. We're in that weird Midler FA time where it's, am I going to have to suck it up and take a one year with good money and try to earn it again? Or are you going to get a little late bidding war going and, and get paid paid? I don't know, but I know that you have two teams in uh, in the LA area that need pitchers. The Dodgers need a pitcher. Yeah. The Angels need two pitchers. The Dodgers rotation right now is what? Kershaw, Bueller, uh, Maida, Urias, and May? Am I missing someone? The cat dude, maybe? The cat dude. Um, What's his name? Strickland? <laughs> no. No, that was the guy they got from Tampa. <laughs> cat dude. Well, when uh, he pitches, they I'm, call it Catterday. Yeah. That's that's tough. Is Rich Hill coming back for them? He's hurt, right? Um, I, don't, I don't believe... Yeah, I don't think he's part of the active plan. Gonsolin is a cat dude. Gonsolin, yeah, yeah. Tony G, baby. Uh, yeah, I mean they they've still they've still got options. 